Router table, day two, check it out. <laughs> I just spent about half an hour getting this table as level as I can get it. There are some limitations here. Our melamine, this is actually shelf material, I believe, shelving material. And it wasn't perfect to begin with, and I knew that. Uh, this is, you know, we get it as close as we can. Took the straight edge, went all around, you know, sort of uh, all four sides, you know, trying to get that straight uh, that straight down that side that side this side and then getting it level with our top here for the table saw and I don't know if you guys can see my file marks here but I spent about half an hour filing down this edge of the table last night because it came up and had a little bit of a and I don't know if that's from over the years being smashed against things or what, but it did have a little ski ramp right there at the end. So I filed it off and got all the inconsistencies out of it. And that allowed this to be nice and flush and that feels pretty good. Uh, it still feels like I'm just a little high right there. So anyway, uh, got that all squared away. Now I just got done zeroing out my router. Yes, I am one of those nerds. Uh, I just basically put it let's call it uh, face down on top of this surface and then ran the router bit all the way to where it just touched this and then you can take this scale and pop it off and you know twist it around so I did that and I've got us uh, set up here each full turn is a quarter of an inch so I've got it a full turn and three sixteenths so a quarter plus three is seven sixteenths so we're just shy a half an inch depth on the router and I've got my router table here or this uh, melamine is three quarters of an inch so that should leave us just over a quarter of an inch so five sixteenths when I route out the spot for my router on the bottom side so we're just gonna you know there are fancy plates that you can buy for like a hundred bucks that drop into this surface and so on what I'm gonna do so I'm going to trace this circle here and uh, we're going to flip this over and I'm going to route that circle out and that's going to be it. Got my little pocket routed there and uh, the router fits pretty darn tight. So I'll mark my holes and we'll drill from the other side and I've kind of had second thoughts about those 1032nd screws uh, when I have these 5 16 ones I'm gonna take another trip to the old uh, hardware store there and see if I can't find me a few of those 5 16 I've got another hardware store close by that has a bunch of specialty hardware so I'm gonna take a trip and see I just would feel a lot better about these bigger guys I don't know you know maybe I'm weird like that but uh, We'll see what we can do. There are some days when things just don't work out. I need to drill a hole here and I just can't get there. Oh well, little hand drill time. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is I've got my little countersink guy and I like to make my countersinks nice and even and I won't be able to do that today. Oh well. perfect half inch hole right there uh, I don't know how that's going to work with changing the bit and all that kind of fun stuff something tells me it's going to be a headache somewhere along the line but you know they do sell those little plates that insert here and I might scratch my head and think about it but uh, you know for right now we're just going to leave this like it is we may make this hole a little bit bigger uh, I do have in this old router stand here 
uh, some kind of an insert there. Sorry, I got my tools scattered about. There we are. I have this little thing, which I could probably figure out how to make that fit in there somehow. And if I need to do that, I will. So, any hoozle, we're just going to put this back together and give her an old test run here. Time to look at electrical for the table saw. I'm going to try and get through this quickly. It keeps taking me 10 minutes to describe it, so shut up and get at it. We are going to have an outlet. One of these will power the table saw, one will be for the router, so I've broken the tab between them so that we can power them from different sources. I've got two switches, one for the table saw, one for the router. These are double pole switches, so we'll start with a single pole. This is old school, is what you have in your bedroom. So power comes in, power goes out, that's all that's on there. So you flip the switch, it connects those two lugs. These are double pole switches, so I've got essentially two switches in the same thing that are both thrown you know with one flick of the wrist there and so we'll have a table saw side and a vacuum side and this one is the same way so this will be a router side and a vacuum side so what the bottom line here is <clears throat> the table saw will be off in this configuration in that configuration the table saw will be on and the vacuum will be on in this configuration the router just came on with the vacuum, so we're still running the vacuum and the table saw and the router. Turn this off and it's just router and vacuum. So anytime either one of them are on, the vacuum will be on. And anytime they're both off, the vacuum will be off. When we have one or the other on, the vacuum will be on. So that's how that's going to work. I've got a, an outlet here that will run off of the vacuum side so it can run a vacuum and a light or whatever you want that will come on with either the table saw or the router. <clears throat> and then I've got another duplex there that will be on all the time just as a courtesy. So if you want to plug in a drill or something else, it'll happen. So we'll mount the courtesy ones back there and the vacuum one back there. So that'll mount back there and the switches will mount up front here. So, uh, you know, when the table saw is running and you're cutting a crooked line or something, you got to cut it off. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to either knee it or hit it with our hands while not dropping the piece of, of work that's out here. So <clears throat> I'm going to get after it. Oh, yeah, last piece. Uh, I did buy uh, this. This is like the cheapest way to buy 12-gauge rubber cord, and it already has an end on it. So this saves you a little bit of money. We're just going to cut this end off, and that, that's going to be our big plug-in. Something I learned in the construction industry a long time ago. Always build your road first. So this is my road map. So this is my courtesy outlets. This will go to the wall for the extension cord. This will be for my router and my table saw to plug into. That will be my switch for my router. And that will be my switch for my table saw. So now I know where everything goes. Now I can route my wiring. We're going to take a quick peek at, at the in progress. So there's our extension cord. There's how it's going to come in. So that's going to be our courtesy box. Then this will be our private outlet box here for the switched outlets. And I'm starting to just pull the wire and get it in place. So what's really sweet is... Uh, the Romex I'm using here has two, let's call it hot, so a black and a red. And so one of them will be for the tool, one will be for the vacuum. So I've called it router is red. So that way I can just remember it. Then on our uh, outlet, we've got the table saw wired for black, the router for red. So the red and black will just flip for the vacuum. So from the table saw, the vacuum will be red. From the router, the vacuum will be black, and we'll just remember that when we get to the box. So uh, anyway, yeah, I like to pigtail things as I go. So switches generally don't get the pigtails, but outlets always do. So I've pigtailed up the outlet. Generally, you don't need to run two neutrals here, but I got a little overzealous and busted the tab between the neutrals. So uh, I got to wire those back together. I wanted to give one last sort of... <laughs> explanation of what's going on here so the cool thing is electricity doesn't know what color wire you're using but it is a good way to code and keep somebody from rewiring something but uh, bottom line is when you have switching circuits you have switch legs and you have uh, power and all these kind of things so sometimes you run uh, hot on a 
white colored wire. Um, so let's see, we've got our power coming in from the wall. So my black is going to be my hot from there. And then I've got a ground and a neutral. So from there, I'm going to hook to the black wire uh, that will feed the, the out, courtesy outlet that will always be on, which will be this one on the right, which has the black. And then the red wire here is the switch, uh, the switched one. So that'll be my vacuum line, which will match up with this red over here. So then uh, basically, so we're feeding power straight to the courtesy outlet. And then we're also tying that power and bringing it over to this other box. So that power leg, which is the black here in my hand, will feed the power to the two switches. So I'm running that on the white, which I know some people do this just opposite of what I'm doing, but uh, for clarity, this is why I, what I did. So that will be power. So this is hot all the time. And then uh, I've got my neutral and ground, which tie back in over here. Then I have my returns, so I have a black and a red return. So this is, if you remember, red for router, black for table saw. And then uh, I've got the flip-flops of those coming back as the switch leg for the, the uh, vacuum outlet. So I have one black and one red, and then I have the red going over here. So uh, that's the nomenclature there. And so this double pole is wired, if you remember right, uh, coming up. The white is my hot. So I'm tying both line sides to, to the white. And then I've got my router and I've got my vacuum. Red for router, because that's my router switch. This is my table saw switch. So this is red for vacuum, black for table saw, again with the white as the power that feeds the bottom two lugs here, which is the line, and this is the load up top. So that's how it all wires together. Uh, I'm gonna get these pigtails uh, tacked onto here, and then we're gonna give it a test run, and that's gonna be it. I am not gonna finish this up tonight. All right, I've got her all plugged in. All my switches are off, and you guys are seeing this for the first time, uh, just like me. So I'm kind of doing a little safety check here, making sure, uh, you know, because I've had this saw sort of upside down and everything else. Just making sure we're clear everywhere. We got nothing that's going to shock us in case we didn't get this wired right. So we'll go ahead and flip that guy on. And then uh, we'll lock, yep, lock our router on and then flip our table saw on. So now's the moment of truth here and you guys are seeing this live. So we'll flip this and we should get vacuum and table saw. Okay, no table saw, just vacuum. So let's see what we get here. Router and, ta router and vacuum should happen. And that's absolutely the case. So uh, we've got something amiss with uh, this plug in here, which should be our table saw. And, uh, you know, just checking her out here. There's, uh, yep, yep. Ah! So uh, that looks like we have uh, smashing success there. So to clean up, I've got to put all of the wiring together. Let's go ahead and unplug this with all the wiring hanging out there. I don't want to accidentally forget that one. So we'll finish, finish up and close those boxes up. I do have an extension ring here. I may need another one just because there's so many wires getting crammed into those two boxes. You can see <laughs> that's a lot of mess to put in there. So the extension rings hang, help out with that. So I got to clean up the wiring there. And then uh, here's a little plumbing stuff I picked up today. So uh, we need to plumb in our wet vac or dry vac, whatever it is, our vacuum. So that is officially it 
for the weekend for this little project. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll give you one more look when I get all the uh, vacuum plumbing done. That's it for today, though. Don't let me go.